welcome, welcome, welcome to the dumbest, shittiest, most fucked up, stupid fucking podcast that has ever fucking existed since the dawn of fucking humanity. I'm here with Jaboy. Lusty! <laughs> Yo, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, how long has it been since we've done a show, dude? Too, way too long. Oh, with all the Jesus stuff going Christ. on, it's like just the amount of stuff that's just pouring out lately. <laughs> it's like, it's like there should be like a 24 hour live feed of what's going on. Oh, 24 hour <laughs> live feed of me taking a shit. Remember we talked about that one time? Oh my God, dude. dude oh my if you, God. If you just upload that to TikTok. I swear to God, you'd have like a hundred million followers. I'm going to have a body cam, like a cop, bro. Just a full time body. And I just have like external battery packs and I just swap them out during the day. Dude. <laughs> You call yourself the cucumber cop. Oh my God. And then you just walk around with Title 18 and go, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Careful, careful. <laughs> this cucumber is going to become a pickle here when I fucking <laughs> ferment it in your asshole, bitch. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Fermentation, motherfucker. <laughs> That just means you've gotten, uh, you've aged like fine wine and, uh, you've gotten bumpy and, and more pleasurable <laughs> over the years. You know what I mean? It's sour. <laughs> Vinegary. You know what I mean? Vinegary deliciousness. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Anyways. Yeah. So, so Joe and I might not be able to go very long tonight. Uh, we, we, we got to the point now where the longer we go, the more hopeless it seems because you know, this show really should be like a seven hour show to be honest, but it's not going to be. So we'll probably do like a, we'll cut it up and we'll do as much as we can. The two, the two biggest discoveries since the last show, um, I am, I am personally moving along on, uh, studying negotiable instruments. I'm doing some courses and stuff. Uh, I'm learning some stuff and then Joe is also doing some negotiable instrument stuff and he's testing some stuff as well. So obviously we're trying to crack negotiable instruments and bills of exchange and international bills of exchange, which is a, a little bit of a longer process, obviously, because it is literally infinite money. So, you know, even if it takes us another several months to a year or whatever to crack that, it's well worth the effort and time. And we have a lot of other people who are working on some things as well. I did a, I don't know if you saw the show I did with Sarah on land patents. You see that one? I did watch that one. Yeah, that was really good. Pretty interesting. All the land patents are handwritten. That was pretty wild, huh? So, uh, the two, the two, the two biggest discoveries that Joe and I have had, uh, are on my end. I opened a trust with the United States postal service under their EPS system. And it's actually a fed wire system. And Joe wanted to spend some time today and go into that, which isn't really all that complicated, in my opinion. Uh, and then on Joe's end, he cracked the whole uh, licensing and registration and that kind of thing by using a DOT system uh, called, is it MCRE? What is it called again? It's uh, Joe? Federal Motor Carriers uh, Safety Administration. Yeah, it's um, – I have the website right here. It's uh, portal.fmcsa.dot.gov. So that's where you're going to go. I'm going to say it again. Um, I'm not going to log out of my – actually, I can use a different browser. Ooh, what the heck? Getting some shit here. Here we go. So I'm going to share my screen and show everybody. I want to do the DOT thing first, if you don't mind, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. What is this? Oh, Messenger? Okay. So let's do... I'm going to close this. Close this. And then we're going to do share screen. Oh, wow. They have a new... They have a new screen sharing thing. Holy shit, they have a new screen sharing thing on this. Uh, it's a presentation. 
It probably is like a whiteboard or something. Oh, New Riverside's so sick. I love this platform so much. Like, it's so nice. So let's see here. We have... Um, my screen is loading. Okay, so this is uh, Portal dot f m c s a dot d o t dot gov, <laughs> and you're going to register for a portal account. Click here, okay. And you're going to click on company user, probably, right? Yep. And then you're going to hit next. And then, ooh, this does not seem like the same one you did, Joe. No, this is uh, something, this is different. So let me actually give you guys, this is what you go to. You go here after you've completed the first process. Yeah, when you, when you go in, you have to set up. You have to set up an account first. So, so you, FMCSA. So if you go see. to the the one you should go to should have like a red truck on the front, and then you go to a registration that says apply for a new US DOT number. There you go. I'll do it. That's it right there. Mm. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Right down there. Bingo. So here we go. So this website is fmcsa.dot.gov slash registration. You're going to go to new registration. Now I know. Now, now I know, and Joe knows that there's all these fucking people that are whatever upset about the fact that, oh, you know, DOT and uh. But for whatever reason, even though this is all commerce-based, you're going to see when you go through it, it's like totally non-commerce, basically. Right? I'm, I'm so, going to – can I handle that with one thing? Show them – type in this uh, on Google. 49 CFR 390.3 T. All right, and then go down. Uh, I like Cornell. Yep. Yeah, it's easy. Now, this is, talks about the rules, right? This talks about all commercial motor vehicles, uh, transporting property, passengers, and interstate. But now go down to F, and it says exceptions. It says unless otherwise specifically provided. Oh, I lost it. Uh, it says uh, these don't apply to... Number three. Go ahead. Read that one out loud. The occasional transportation of personal property by individuals not for compensation nor in the furtherance of a commercial enterprise. There you go. I like how they say occasional. Fucking idiots. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's undefined. So occasional, like, what do you mean by occasional? Once a day? A few times a day? Well, plus you have, yeah. Oh, well, I guess, yeah. I guess, yeah. So, 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 just so everybody knows, motor vehicle is commerce only. Motor carrier is commerce or non-commerce. Right, and that's how you get the right to travel. That's how they slip in the right to travel because everyone has it. I have all these exhibits, by the way. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show this. this right now because I want to really, really get this. So, motor vehicle means any vehicle, machine, tractor, trailer, or semi-trailer propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used upon the highways and the transportation of passengers or property or any combination thereof, blah, 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 but does not include any vehicle, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I thought it said... So that's motor vehicle, and then you have motor carrier. Motor carrier means for hire motor carrier or a private motor carrier. Mm -hmm. um, the term includes a motor carrier's agents, officers, and representatives, as well as employees responsible for hiring, supervising, training, assigning, or dispatching of drivers. Um, yeah. So it's just a, a motor vehicle means means commerce only, and driver means commerce only. Uh, and then I, 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 from everything I've heard down the grapevine, traveling, it would be the word for a motor carrier. 
a private motor carrier. Right. And then, oh, no. they, and when I talk to the people from the Department of Transportation on the phone, they say traveling. They're like, oh, you're traveling in a private motor carrier. And they go, yes. And they go, oh, okay. They still call the operator of the motor carrier a driver no matter what. But they say, well, he's, you're a driver, or but you're not for hire, so it doesn't. It's because the the operation is is non commerce, so the, the, just for the lack of a better term, they just say driver anyway. Mm. That's really what happens. Is I'm like, well, there's no drivers, and they're like, yeah, but uh, you know, because you're not doing anything in commerce, uh, it's it wouldn't apply in that situation. So that's interesting. Forty nine CFR three ninety dot fifty. Driver would be a uh, driver means. There it is. So subsection six, uh, underneath subsection six, yeah, driver means that. any person who operates any commercial motor vehicle. See, it's very clear. Commercial motor vehicle. Driving a commercial motor vehicle, it has a definition. Oh, no. Under the influence of alcohol. Okay, that's the definition. It's the party, dude. So anyways, uh, there you go. And then we go back to um, this here. We have uh, apply online via the unified registration system. So let's see if this is actually a shortcut for you guys. It would be nice if it was. Yeah, here we go. That's so it. you can actually go straight to this. This is – so it might let you do this just typing it in. So you're going to go to – you can see it up top here uh, where my where my mouse is. It's portal dot m f f m c s a dot d o t dot gov slash u r s registration wizard. Now, sometimes, a lot of times, let's just see. I'm just gonna check one thing. If you go straight to it, yeah, it'll go straight to it. Now, what if you go straight to it? But the capitalization is different. Let me just see here. I'm just a little curious. I don't think it's going to make a difference. Aha! Nah, it makes a difference. So check it out. So so you guys need to be careful. Uh, we have special capitalization here that you will not be able to access the system if you're trying to type it in directly. So it's uh, all lowercase, but the, the, the U in URS is capitalized, the R in registration is capitalized, and the W in wizard is capitalized. So portal.fmcsa.dot.gov slash capital U R S capital R E G I S T R A T I O N capital W I Z A R D. You're going to go to new application. Now, if you look over here, you can save as you go through this and shit. Super cool. It's almost like a system, right? It's going to give you a bunch of pages that tells you things and blah, blah, blah. Hit next, right? Next. 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 You should actually read these, by the way, to some degree. A lot of them do have to do with commercial activity. Those ones you can obviously skip. But we're showing this um, in a very speedy way. Okay. So... Um. <laughs> no, that's that's so your ID. You don't change that. That's it gives you, you. It actually gives you an ID. Okay, so, you so you're going to it, fill all this out. Save it for later. I can't go any farther than this. I, I don't really want to go through all this, Joe. But anyways, no, 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 no. Um, I I already I have like a, I have a video on that already. So that's fine. But yeah, you so can Joe has a video that. on this already. So so you're going to go to Joe's Rumble channel. Yeah, Rumble. Dot com. Rumble.com, and then what's it called? Uh, Joe Lustica, one word. And yeah, the, yeah. 
Here he is. Lusty's here. And then he goes, see what the cops see when they run your DOT number. <laughs> I haven't even seen that one. Oh, yeah. So we've got the DOT number. We've got the U.S. DOT online step-by-step -step with Felicia Beverly. We've got the DOT authority and insurance bond, creating your own insurance out of thin air. We've got um, create, uh, using the DOT number for interstate travel. This is how to make a, a slight adjustment in the account to turn it to just the state that you signed up in to interstate so you can actually go through the whole country with your DOT number. And then... How to get the DOT registration number for free. This is the actual video. He doesn't go through. You don't go through the actual application. You go through, like, the paper version. But it's right. It's, it should be enough for m most. It's not the simplest thing in the world, honestly. No, but um, it was more detailed, and it tells you that they're how, they're how they look and view at everything. But I did that because I, I already did it online, and I didn't have anyone. But I did it with Felicia Beverly online. So if you want to just do that one, you can run through it that way. If anyone wants to do that, I would like to talk about that insurance bond because they actually talk about surety bonds, how you can use bonds to insure the uh, motor carriers. Hmm. But... Something you wanted to say there? Uh, yeah. Well, one thing is that the the registration number you get for free if you do it correctly, you're going to get uh, it'll it'll be free because it's non-commerce. So any commerce question, you always say no to. Hazardous materials, you say no to. You just say no to all that stuff. Uh, you do it as a trust, and then you make yourself the beneficiary. If you want to do, if you want to be the trustee, that's fine as well. I don't think it really matters too much because either or whoever's whoever's operating the car afterwards, right, is exempt. You're exempt from license, registration, because you have the right to travel. And that all that number do is doing is securing your right to travel. All right? It's kind of like a, a backdoor's way to doing that because the Supreme Court's made many, 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 many rulings on it. How you have the right to travel, you have the right to travel in your automobile, on the highways, without a license or registration, you don't need those things. And they've, they've made tons and tons of cases on that. And it's crazy that cops go around pulling people over for this stuff. And it's because you're under, you're under the presumption that you're in a motor vehicle. Okay? If you change the status of your, of your car from motor vehicle to motor carrier... You've pulled yourself, you've pulled your vehicle, whatever vehicle you have put your DOT number on, out of their jurisdiction from that. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of fascinating because a, a motor carrier is, is, could be one or the other. That's the part that's they've right. made it a bit – they've made it a bit confusing because a motor carrier, it's, it could be one or the other. But but motor vehicle is the one you want to stay away from. Motor carrier is so like if 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 a cop if you tell a cop you're in a motor carrier, the the next question the cop should ask would be um, on the motor carrier definition. Where, where do we have that? Oh, is this, are you for hire? You should probably ask yeah, are, are you, you are you currently so so a motor carrier could be either one um, so the question would be as a motor carrier are you currently involved in uh, here so motor carrier means a for hire motor carrier or a private motor carrier so the question would be so the question is uh, you know you, are you are you something blah 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 motor vehicle you say you know this isn't a motor vehicle it's a motor carrier and it's a private motor carrier it's not a for hire motor carrier that's the exact exact wording that you would say according to all these laws that's if you even get pulled over because um what they'll do if they if let's say you're running red lights and a cop goes whoa he's gonna run your your dot number Right, he's actually going to use their website to look up your stuff, and when he punches punches in your number, 
what's going what he's going to get back is going to say exempt for hire uh not not for hire exempt for hire uh non-commercial uh private motor carrier and it'll say type it'll say carrier and it'll say private and it'll have all those list of exemptions not for hire exempt from hire and he really can't act upon that because he's enforcing motor vehicle rules regulations and he can't he doesn't have any so when you're a for hire motor carrier he can get you because you're in commerce but because you're in the private there's nothing he can really do about that so it's kind of interesting well i i've seen case law where it says that it motor like private motor carriers essentially what would be private motor carriers own own the freeways when traveling on the freeways so it's it's such a strange it's sort of like when you're when you're tra- when you're when you're traveling privately in your private non for hire motor carrier you basically own the streets and the freeways when you're operating in commerce you're underneath all of the laws of of commerce and whatever basically i guess right so so the other element to all of this obviously is the passport you don't want to have a dot number and then give people a driver's license you don't want to do that because a driver's license means basically that you 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 would it, it's an oxymoron and it, it's almost it's almost kind of like a borderline like perjury situation because you you're 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 saying that you're operating a, a, a private not for hire motor carrier, but then you're you're giving the officer a license that states explicitly that you are driving motor vehicles. Right. So you're mixing jurisdictions. It doesn't go you're, well. You're mixing jurisdictions and you're also just being really dumb. Because it's it's you're putting yourself in a situation where one of those two things is false. Either the driver's license is false or the motor carrier aspect is false. So it's like you're fucked either way, basically. Right. Right. And but, I would I would go so far as to say even even if you just have like a normal US citizen passport, I'd be like, fuck it. Like just use that. You don't even necessarily need like a national passport. I would just drive around with like a fucking normal ass passport with a DOT number. Yeah, because the it, it, by the way, citizens can do this. All right? Yeah, I I was, to- that's why I said that. That's why I said that because I don't, I don't, I don't. Because someone's going to ask, like, "Well, do I need to have a my my passport all straightened out to do this?" And I, I don't, I don't think nope. so. No, I talked to. Uh, by the way, I'll just let everyone know real quick. When you do this, you're going to get a lot of phone calls from people who say they work with the Department of Transportation. Mm. They're all solicitors. Holy shit, bro! What the fuck? <laughs> No, it's it's so almost much. like it's almost like the Department of Transportation saying like, "Oh, you want to you want to get out of our system, and oh, you want to you want to have remedy for, you know, what you're doing, and blah blah. blah. You want to have the right to travel? Well, fuck you. I'm going to sell your <laughs> shit to every goddamn. I don't know. I yeah, have to be like a dick, that, but it just seems like it's totally fucked. Like my phone, I'm what? like, I need to get like an app or something. My phone's fucking blowing up, bro. Oh yeah. Well, you know what I did was I just told them this is a private motor carrier, and they just want to get off the phone with you right away. They're like, oh, okay, all right, all right, sorry, sorry, sorry. And really? Then gone. Yeah, really fast. You just tell them, oh, oh. They say, yeah, so, yeah, we work with the DOT, uh, just, uh, you know, make sure everything's straightened out. And they go, oh, this is a private motor carrier. And they go, oh, it is? And I go, yeah. And they're like, all right, have a nice day. No shit, I should have done that because I get calls from every goddamn uh, uh, area code on the, under the sun. Yeah, I got that for, like, the first two days, and then it stopped. I got a call today, and then um, the girl that called me, she was really slick. She actually got me for a second. And, she, well, what happened was she called. I couldn't, I couldn't answer the phone, so I called it right back. And she goes, oh, thanks for calling. You know, we're, we're in conjunction with the uh, Department of Transportation. And I'm like, oh, okay, where are you calling from? And she wouldn't tell me the name of the company for a minute. And then, and finally, I was like, but oh, I was like, oh, she's like, oh, we just want to make sure everything's in order and blah, blah, blah. I said, I understand. What company are you with? And then she told me the name. I said, okay, well, just let you know, there's a private motor carrier. She goes, all right, have a nice day. Huh. 
That was it. This is, like a whole, this is like a whole... I've had so many people, oh, yeah, Brandon, like, duh, I got my fucking DOT number years ago. I'm like, I'm like, why in the fuck <laughs> are people not fucking talking about this, bro? This is like the hottest fucking thing, oh, yeah. practically, since the definition of United States. It's like, bro, like... I know. Piss me off, and, bro. And that, yeah, that's the thing that gets me is that people go, uh huh. They're like watching. Oh, you got tickets for that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah, I got a DOT number, so I don't have to worry about it. What the hell? Why didn't anyone say anything before? Shit, bro. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, Unfucking believable. I'm over here like, oh my god, I found something really big. Apparently, everyone's people already knew about it. I'm like, mm, okay. Thanks for keeping yeah, that. Yeah, so you secret. go through that whole online process and you and you you know you did it right when at the end of the process, well actually literally right in the middle of the goddamn application it came up on this big ass screen and it said we've determined by the different things that you've selected that what you need is a private motor carrier blah 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 blah. That was like after just a few pages I got that big ass page, right? And that's when I was like, holy shit, bro. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And that's when you know you really hit it, right? Now, now what you want to be looking at is, like, they're going to ask you if you're going to be transporting cargo. They're going to be asking you if you're going to be transporting passengers. And they have little clickable definitions. And you just want to go into all the definitions just take a look and and make sure that you are uh, staying away from. I think the one that I did was uh, goods, transporting goods. And then they ask you what kind of goods you're going to be transporting. And I just said general goods. And then they, I clicked next. And then they said passengers. I said no. Hazardous material, no. All these things, no, no, no. And it was just goods and general goods. And then it popped up and said something like, due to what you're saying, you need a private motor carrier. Ball. That's when you know you're on the right track. And then the other way that you know you're on the right track is when you get to the end of it, it's, it's, it's free. Yep. It's absolutely free. And once you complete the process, they give you the. It's weird because it, it it appears that like normally there's like a there's like a processing period where you have to like wait a little bit to get a number, but when you do it private, they give you a number instantly. That's right, instantly, and it's no fee. Instantly, and it's no fee. So, the videos that Joe talk about, and then this one, um, are are really pretty pretty badass on that and then i don't know if there's anything else you wanted to say about that um no those are good i i did want to talk because look the thing about the motor carriers is that they don't tell you they have to be insured they just you just have to show financial responsibility that's yeah. that's the language they use and it's mostly pertaining to commercial motor carriers right for higher motor carriers not the private ones. The private ones, you don't even have to have them insured. I know some people don't feel comfortable with that, that and that's fine. You can go buy insurance if you want, okay? Um, there's a ton of uh, insurance companies that if you call them and give them your passport number, they'll take that. They will take it. Insurance companies? Insurance companies will take your passport number instead of your driver's license. For the most part, there might be like a couple that won't. But most of them will take it because your passport is is recognized as an uh, international uh, permit, driver's license, basically, yeah, or driver's license, whatever. But so I, I have Mercury, and I called my guy, and he said he didn't know a lot about it, but he said that Progressive Insurance offers uh, it's a lot more expensive than normal. <gasps> progressive. First, let me go over the bond thing, and then I'll talk about the progressive thing that happened because the progressive okay. thing is really cool. So this is the uh, insurance bond, okay? And I printed this out on parchment paper, okay? So it's like uh, like a cotton paper, a little more official. And I made it out for $5 million, okay? So I made a $5 million uh, insurance surety bond. It's a bearer bond because it says payable to bearer because you don't know who you're going to end up giving this to. And it's made for five million because of liability of death, and it's a legitimate negotiable instrument. One thing is it does say it's negotiable here. Two, um, my signature's on there. So as a signature, as you can see, the signature means that it's it is monetized. Okay, it's notarized on the back. Okay, officially, 
All right, so it has someone else's signature on there as well. My signature is actually on there two times. And we have a U.S. obligation on here, a canceled United States stamp, okay? So a canceled U.S. stamp right there. You can see. So what I did was I wrote this thing out, got it notarized, put the stamp on there, and I went to the post office and I said, can you cancel the stamp? And then they stamped it. And you can see the little stamp right there over the stamp. So because it's from the U.S. Post Office and it's a canceled U.S. stamp, according to 18 U.S. Code 8, canceled United States stamps are an obligation to the United States. And I negotiated that three-cent stamp to be $5 million. And that is what I keep in the car. So if, if the police ask me if I, for proof of financial responsibility, I have a $5 million uh, financial responsibility responsibility instrument. So that's your that's your insurance. That's my insurance. This thing right here. This is the actual one. This is the one I keep in my car. Wow. So I actually brought out for that. But that's the next see, step of what I need to do. You want to see the progressive one? Oh, definitely. All right. So I'll tell everybody what happened. So first thing I did was um, I tried to get a car with uh, Carvana. And uh, using the same uh, discharge method for the car loan. And it actually worked. I actually got, I didn't get the car. And th that's a whole other story. But uh, I'm going to try it again. I, th I know what I did. I'm going to try to clean that up, make it work this time. But they said, um, oh, you have to insure the car. You have to have it insured before we deliver it. So I did the same exact process with the insurance company. And they sent something to me in the mail. We're going to see what it is. I haven't he hasn't opened even it opened it yet. I haven't even opened it. So I honestly don't really know what's in there. I assume what's in here, but <laughs> we'll see. Where did I put it? I thought I put it there. There it is. Joe, Joe, Josephine, Josephine. So I got this nice little package from Progressive with the using the car loan discharge method. And we're going to open it right now. I'm opening it for the first time. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, listen to it. Listen to that window crackle. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's see what I got. They sent me. The insurance cards. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Bro, dude, I'm telling you, dude, like fucking. All of life is a stage, dude. All of life is a stage. Uh, the insurance cards. <laughs> okay. It could have been a rejection letter. Who knows? There you go. Uh, so I have a car that I never bought that's uh, totally insured now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet you. I bet you. If you dig far enough somewhere on the United States code, it's going to say something like, you know, you own whatever you insure or something like that. And you oh can just yeah. Go get, like. You can just go get insurance and then just walk up into a fucking Carvana or like a car dealership and just say like, oh, I insured the vehicle, so I own the vehicle." Uh, I'm knows? gonna I'm gonna tell you this. I don't rec. I I'm I'm not offering anyone to do this. I'm just saying this out of purely educational purposes or and uh, and definitely entertainment purposes only. So basically, Joe's saying, "Please videotape this so I can watch it later and laugh my fucking ass off." <laughs> That's what Joe's saying. <laughs> please. <laughs> Please, 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 oh this God, is, entertain me. This is Joe is saying, please fucking entertain me this with this. This is Continue. totally for entertainment purposes only. Totally. <laughs> so, what you do? <laughs> this is how you entertain me, this okay? Is, please. please entertain me, okay? 
<laughs> what you do is you go to a uh, a car dealership, right? Go around the, the lot looking at nice new cars, right? And expensive. Expensive cars. And find Rolls one. Rolls Royces, Ferraris. Right. Find one that you really like. Ooh, I like this one. And go Ooh. really close up to the windshield so you can write down the VIN number, right? <laughs> <laughs> For entertainment purposes only. For ent- no, totally entertainment purposes only. <laughs> to entertain us, fucker. To entertain us. Then what you do is you go down, uh, you go, you leave, you call the DMV, you give them the VIN number, you ask them the, the, the VIN, the make and model, and you say, how much would it be to pay the taxes on this and, and to pay for the title? They will tell you how much it's going to cost for the taxes and for the title. And then you say, okay, do you want a check or money order? They tell you what they want. You go and send them that check or money order for that amount of money. They will send you the title and the plates. You go down to the dealership. You hand the plates over to them with the title and you say, please put the plates on my car. And they will do it. We we're gonna we're gonna buy www.freecars.com, I think. <laughs> Entertainment purposes. Welcome <laughs> to freecars.com. Come on down right, so. to www.freecars.com <laughs> and uh we have an excellent deal for you. Uh you know, buy now, you know, freecars.com. Right. Thank you. So and then uh you know, they give you your car. If I ever see anybody in a Rolls Royce or a Ferrari with private plates, I'm probably going to literally run them off the road so I can fucking talk to them. Just, just, just as a, just as a little side note, just as a little side note, if you see some guy fucking hanging out the window with a fucking pickle hat yelling at you, yeah, just pull over. I'm the police now, bitch. I bet you if you see that person doing that, definitely pull them over and they'll probably want to get you to like sign like your scrotum or something. <laughs> Let's make some negotiable instruments out of some beer bottles. You know what I mean? On the oh, side yeah. of the road. Uh, <laughs> you're like, oh, my God. Thank you for stopping me. Oh, my God. It's so fucking funny. All right. So let's let's move this gravy train I, I along here. Now. There you go. So now, now, uh, now that we've gone over that briefly, we didn't go through it as much as I'd like to, the depth. Normally, I like to get in-depth with all that. But Joe has some great stuff on his Rumble channel, so go check that out. Or just... Fiddle around with it. You'll you'll get you'll get through it if you know a lot of what's in my course and you know the difference between commerce and non-commerce. You'll get through it without a, without a problem. It's, it, it might take you an hour or two just to kind of fiddle with it. Um, and then once you finish with it, it's going to give you a number, and then you can actually go to that first website that I went to, the portal, and then you can log into the portal, and it'll show you all the different things that you had typed in earlier, and then from there you can edit. And, and update your registration to go from intrastate to interstate, which is another thing that Joe has a video on that him and I just did literally live before we did this uh, this show. And then at that point, you're all set. And then and then I guess there's a buy biannually. You have to go on there and just make sure everything's updated and uh, submit to them like an updated biannual thing. And I guess it's still free. So... As long as you go on there every couple of years and verify everything is, is legit, uh, it's free for life, basically. Yep. Essentially. Yeah. And you could always uh, you can always modify things to it. I changed I updated my address on there because originally when you put it in you have to you can't do any weird stuff with the address. You have to put in the legitimate addresses and stuff like that. Because uh, they don't ask for residence, they ask for domicile. That's what yeah. they're looking for. Well, well, no, they asked for on the on the on the uh, paper form. The, it... Oh, on the on the online form, they asked for like primary location of business activity. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They never asked for domicile or residence. I I, I never. I don't think I typed in. Well, no, be because I domicile I typed like, in my actual address one time. No, I mean, if you don't Let's have to, here. you just put in uh, an address, but then you get, you know, you have to get mail somewhere or something, right? But 
Um, no, but what I'm saying is, is that I don't think I ever once typed in my actual fucking address. Let me just check here. But I did change mine in the meantime. I changed mine to rule free delivery, non domestic. <clears throat> so everything, everything that I have now, my, you know, the driver's license, which I didn't get rid of yet. Uh, and the. Uh, did you adjust your driver's license? Yeah, yet? it says uh, rule free delivery, non domestic. Uh, did you? I, I, that, that might just be like mailing. Or I would actually like for sure go in and, and change like, the signature card too, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. plus, don't don't forget one of the questions they ask you on the on the driver's license form when you do a new application to change your driver's license contract is, are you a U.S. citizen? Yes or no? That's right. Say no. So keep in mind, like, don't fuck around with that shit. And they ask you, are you a um, resident? Can also say no. So they ask you, they ask you company address. And then they ask you mailing address. They they actually don't ask you a residence or a domicile address. It's like super weird. Yeah, well, because, uh, yeah, that's just how it is. But you can't put in weird stuff on the addresses. Like people try to do like. Real... I, just did, I just did P.O. Box and it worked fine. Oh, that's literally. good. Yeah, you can do a. I think you can do a P.O. Box. Cause... Well, because it's a, it's a mailing Bingo. address. It's not a residence address. Yes. Yeah. But I noticed that it didn't take. I gave him the address to my studio originally and didn't take it. And so I had to give him my home address and then took that. But then I updated it later to make a rule free delivery. And then I used my studio as my, uh, my mailing address. Hmm. So if anyone goes, and looks up my number now, that's what they're going to get. My studio address So come on down here. Come on down to the studio, freecars.com. We've got all your cars. We've got your Rolls Royces. We've got your Maseratis. We've got your Ferraris. Would you like a freecar.com? Freecar.com. Come on down. I have good news. We'd love to help you. Freecars.com is for sale. This premium domain is available for purchase. Premium domain, freecars.com. Let's go. That's right. So it's there. We can do it, freecars.com. I'm not going to spend for a premium domain. I'll just buy like... Free cars, Jim at pickle my ass dot com, <laughs> and I would just for like four dollars, I would just buy that for like four dollars and use that shit. I don't there you go. I'm not gonna pay a bunch of money to give away free cars, bro. That's not how no, it works. no, 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 no. Uh, all right, so you want to move on to the EPS system? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So go ahead and share your screen. Uh, I don't know a lot about this. I learned about this a long time ago, and then I didn't do anything with it. Uh, this is called the Enterprise Payment System. I gotta do the screen, right? Whole screen, or else I'm gonna kill everything, right? It's probably fixed by now, but yeah, just do whole screen. Entire screen. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Go to uh, website. It's Postal Pro. Dot USPS dot com slash all capital letters E P S. You see, I typed it in before. All right, so here. So, what, what the E. I don't really know a lot about this, but basically, like, go ahead and click on USPS Business Customer Gateway. And then, and then, basically, what what the USPS Business Customer Gateway is, and it's a whole shitload of professional, um, like tools and stuff that you can use. It's not just EPS. EPS is just one of like a whole bunch of different things, right? It says here managing your mail, every door direct mail, intelligent mail, uh, all sorts of different things, right? So go ahead and and click on sign up for the BCG. The big and then cucumber you're probably guy. gonna have to. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm the BCG, <laughs> uh, and then I guess, I guess with all this shit, you're gonna have to 
unshare your yeah. screen and type all this in. Yeah, because it's uh, Nanya. So go ahead and unshare your screen. I'll tell you when it's unshared. There you go. It's okay. So go ahead and do that and <clears throat> uh, walk us through what you're doing while you're doing uh, it. So I'm putting my username, which is... Um, <clears throat> Lusty Man six nine six nine. It's called Lusty Man Pickle sixty nine sixty nine. Lusty Man sixty nine sixty nine. Because one sixty nine isn't enough, but two sixty nine is like perfect. It just feels more my username complete. I can't you know believe I mean? it. Lusty Pickle Man sixty nine sixty nine is actually available. Wow, I'm I'm surprised. I can't. It's your lucky day, bro. Uh, Lusty man. Security question. Here's the answer. What is your favorite girth of pickle? Is the first question. There we go. Six inches, nine inches, or sixty-nine inches are the three are the three answers for that one. <laughs> Wait, what? I missed something there. I, six answers, six inches, nine inches, and sixty-nine inches. Those are the three. <laughs> those are the three options. Let's see. Select doctor. Favorite. Favorite diameter. Favorite average diameter of ideal cucumber. Um. And then, and then the answer would be something like four. Dude, title. I'm putting doctor. Seven. First name cucumber. So that's how you. That's how you Dr. should play. Doctor Cuke. Doctor Cuke. Doctor Cuke. I should have done Miss. I should have done Miss Brandon. All right. I think I'm good now. It says, "How would you like to find address, address, zip code, company identifier?" I'll oh, do that. that one you're gonna do okay. address. Company name. Uh, and then you have to actually. I'm going to. Um, share. I'll share my screen on this. You have to actually type in where your business is located. I tried to fuck with this a bunch. I mean, I'll just stuff, put in where my business is located. I don't care. Yeah, it just didn't really work. So, and then and then once you once you type in so so he filled all this out. This is simple shit. If you can't figure this out, then I don't know. Impale yourself on a graveyard fence, I guess, because you're pretty much worthless as a human being. Uh, but here we have uh, contact information. How can we get a hold of you? And then we have find your uh, please enter your address so USPS can find the best deliverable option to you. So so what you're doing here essentially is you're 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 linking an address to like maybe send them a whole bunch of mail that they can send out or like there's a, there's a lot of services. It's not just EPS. There's a lot of fucking services here. Okay, so all right, so I got they are going by possible addresses because my address, address. Is kinda, it is weird, so I can understand why the uh, DOT rejected it originally. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to type in your address here, and then you're going to verify. I'm sure they're not going to let you do it from a P.O. box because the the whole point of this is like, let's say you have bulk mail, and you want them to come and pick up all of your bulk mail to mail out to, like, direct mail campaigns or something like that. That's why they're asking you this question. So it's not some goofy question that you need to figure out how to avoid or dodge. You can just simply answer it. Yeah. All right, see, they they actually recognized my my business. They pulled it up. So, this is the business, and I'm like, yeah, that is the, that is it. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so it says create account. So it has it's checked off my business, the business address, create account, right? Yeah, and then once you get to the page where it says all the different services and stuff, I want to see if maybe you can share your screen again without anything. Uh, it says I'm registered. Without, without revealing anything. Right. Yeah, so it's super easy. Super, super easy to register. All okay. right, so I'm registered. Now i got to go find my email. There it is. All right, thank you for registering. Business. This is account type business, right? That's okay. Uh, what other choices do you have? Uh, I guess not. All right, I guess there was none. 
Sign in to the to perform critical tasks. Log in to access other business related services. Yeah. So so if if possible, if you could yeah. share your screen on that one because you're going go to go to my email. Once you log in, there's going to be like an other services button, and then you're going to click on that, and then it's going to have a fuck ton of other services. And then, and then we're going to be able to dig down into those and find, um, well, do you want to unshare? You have to log back into your account. Yeah. All right. So I have to get back in. What should I click in for here? Probably gateway. whatever your username and password was. You just, you just go and oh, sign on in. on any now. of these, it doesn't even matter. Cause it's giving me like, just on, it's giving me a couple of links. Sign in and get started. Uh, oh, okay, that's it right there. Let me unshare my screen. I'll sign in and get started. Yeah, boy. Josephine, he's the lustiest man that you've ever seen. Oh, lustiest man that right. you've ever seen. Lustiest man that you've ever seen. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, sign up. Oh, no. it says hi, Joe. Okay. So I'm signed in. All right. Now I'm signed in. Yeah, he changed me. Is there a bunch of incriminating evidence on your screen, or can you share your I'll screen? Share. Fuck it. Fuck it. I don't care. Um, so now we've logged into EPS, and we have this screen here. And what is it saying? Wait, what? Let's see this. Send, receive, shop, business, international, help. Uh, let me, let me see here. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see, Mr. Lusty. I wonder if I can make my label. Nah, it doesn't matter. All right, so so once you log in, it's a completely different site that you're going to go into, and it doesn't look like there's anything particularly. Yeah, I should go to gateway.usps.com. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Go to All that right. one. Oops. So that was this one. Well, whatever. <clears throat> All right, so. Um, I guess I got to click continue. I did that. Ta -ta 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 Let's go here. I'll just go gate three. It will show your address, though. Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's my business, so write to me. Send me some mail. See if it actually gets to me, because I have not been getting mail. Send me some silver coins. Yes, yeah, send me silver coins. <clears throat> what is that? Oh, yeah, that looks uh, that looks better. Yeah. So you're gonna go from there. You're gonna go to on the upper right. Let me just make sure we're all good here. This looks pretty safe for you to click into the next area. So on the upper right, you're gonna go to manage account and you're gonna go to manage services. And then you're going to scroll down to EPS, and it's going to say, like, get access or something like that, enterprise payment system. Yes. There you go. Now click on the link, enterprise payment system on the left-hand side. It looks like you're already automatically approved instantaneously. Oh, cool. I don't know what it's going to show on the screen, though. I'm scared. It's going to give away all your secrets, Josephine. 
create a new account. Do you want to unshare your screen and then you can just share yeah. as we go here? So I will unshare. Create new account. Okay, legal agreement between me, USPS, an independent establishment of the executive branch of the United States federal government, postal service. Well, I guess if I don't accept it, I'm not gonna. It's not gonna happen, right? Yeah. Payment method. Oh, ACH debit payment method. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's going on here. So, so when I was creating it, it said that you're creating a trust with the USPS. <clears throat> trust payment method. Yeah, see? Uh, selecting the trust payment method allows you to use electronic fund transfers. No shit. Wow. So you're basically creating a trust with the United States Postal Office, Postal Service, and you can transfer funds out of it and you can transfer funds into it. I don't know all the details because it's, it's like a lot. It's not really a lot. I just don't really know. Like, I fucked with it for like one night and then I didn't fuck with it anymore. Okay, so pick the... All right, now that I got that, I know that when it's time to pick a payment method, I'm going to pick the trust one. All right, submit. Please verify all your information. Now, I, I already tried, just so everybody knows, I already tried. This The whole point why I even tried this in the first place was because this account is attached to Fedwire. So I, I added an ACH account, or I actually added a Fedwire account, and I tried typing in the... Um, Federal Reserve routing number according to the bond on the back of my social security card with my um, uh, social security number as the account number and it came up as as they started processing it and then they flagged it and then they took it down and and it's weird the 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 error message that I got was that basically like it was weird it was like the error message was like Federal Reserve does not um involve itself in this particular type of activity or something. It was really a strange error message that I had gotten. And uh, and then it just says suspended on that particular one little... You can still use the EPS account. You can do whatever you want. I just wasn't able to to get that, that Federal Reserve account to right. work. All right. So I'm here. It says grant the following users access to this... EPS account by selecting a role for them. Let's see. Administrator, payment manager, subscriber, no access. Um, hold on, let me, I think I got to back it up one. Okay. Okay. Got that. So I selected the business location to associate with that account. So now it recognizes the account. Um, Josephine. Josephine. Administrator, payment Josephine. manager, Josephine, yeah. subscriber, no access. Uh, let's try that. No associated users found. Click next. Okay, cool. I got it. They gave me a number. So I'm gonna go save. So that's like your that's like your trust number or like EPS account Mom, number or whatever. On to that. Yeah, it says your EPS number is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. So so it says this is where you manage payment methods associated with your account. Add a new payment method using button to the right. Your primary payment method will be used for all purchase transactions. You may change your primary payment method using the prioritization An button. Nickname optional. Okay. Trust account deposit funds to UPS bank for all charges. Doesn't need a debit enabled bank account for all charges. Wow, that's pretty interesting. That's so. I guess I guess what this is is basically like EPS is basically like a. 
It's a it's a according to this main page here, it's a it's it's used to pay into your USPS account in order to use USPS services, right? But there's a way to withdraw funds, transfer funds. Um So yeah, it's it's interesting. I don't I don't know all the details. Um Well, I wonder. All right, so now I got it says I can set up a trust account, deposit and deposit instructions. Deposit funds to U- USPS Bank for all charges. Uh, ACH debit, designated debit, enabled bank account for all charges. So that's that would be the next thing to do. Oh, yeah. And when you click on the trust one, then it has like ACH credit and wire transfers. Um you know, it's funny. I'm kind of realizing here it says difference between ACH credit and wire transfer. The main difference is between automated clearinghouse ACH credit and Fed wire transfer are timing and fees. It's so funny. So I've never I've never put this two and two together before. So so wire and Fed wire are the same term. That makes sense. Okay. ACH credit is an overnight method of moving funds from one bank to another. The bank charge for ACH transactions are usually less than $1. However, charges vary from bank to bank. A wire, and then in, in parentheses it says Fed wire, transfers funds from one bank to another in approximately four to six hours. The bank charge for a wire is higher than the overnight ACH. Be sure to contact your bank representative for more information. Whoa. Um, this I think I think we're I think we're on to something here. This is really it. Now wait a second. It says here it is critical to use your complete EPS account number when you transfer funds electronically. Yep. This information is necessary to allow. So is the EPS number basically a routing number? It's a the EPS number is part of a bank account number. The, they they give you the ABA number for the routing for wire transfer, and then they give you another one uh, for ACH credit. There's two different routing numbers. Oh yeah, but you I have a that. bank account. Wells Fargo Bank. Yeah, it's Wells Fargo, and they have two different routing numbers. One's for wire transfers. And the others for ACH. And I think this is probably part of the problem with the uh, the car loan payments being reversed. Oh, yeah, you're one's right. a wire. Like we're doing wire transfers or something like that. Or we're doing um, – what we're doing is ACH credit transfers, and but it's through a wire. We're like we're wiring it. Maybe maybe there's a number that needs to come before the social security yeah. number. I think it could be this uh, this number. I'm gonna try it right now. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna try it on something. <laughs> I won't say what it is. I'm gonna try something somewhere. CD format. I'm trying something right now. Just scroll down. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so we'll remove that. Now I'm going to go payment method. Add a new payment method. So I can share here my screen on this. So we have... um, This is what we're talking about here. Um, Electronic transfer procedures. We have um, introduction, and we have section A talking about ACH versus 
fed wire. Do not use for wire. Yeah. Okay, so this is not a wire transfer. This is... Now I'm going to go back to here. Try this. Okay. All right. I'm doing something. I'm going to go uh, try to discharge something right now with this. Now I set something up here. Let's see if this works. You have to set up a there's a trust account. It says trust account, and then I tried to put in another account, and it said uh, mm. suspended when I tried to add the. Um, you know, I could try. Let me try. We're both trying stuff here. Um, well, it, so far so good. I, I just. I just went and did something with it, and it looks like it went through. So now I'm just going to check to see. Okay. So far, so good. Now, so far, this is working. We'll see. Are you the, uh, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, I still have a, a truck insured. All right. So. So, um, that's about all I'm able to do at the moment. Yeah, it just, it just kind of, it just says pending. Yeah, that's what I got going on. It makes you, it makes you, it makes you do the micro transactions. You have to do, you have to do, it, it, it has you do micro debits before you can actually add any account. <laughs> That's the problem. Anyway, um Well, that's interesting. So I think we got something going here with this uh, this thing. This is very interesting. It has all these uh, electronic fund transfer procedures. 
uh, wire, bank wiring, stuff like that. Yeah, I haven't dug into this too much. Interesting. So, it seems like it's working so far. I haven't got anything back yet, so we'll see. You have to, um, you have to put in your. Uh, it asks you for like microtransactions. That's the main issue. Well, I tell you. Well, I did something a little different, but I will tell you. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you tomorrow if it went through or not. All right, dog. I know you got to run out of here pretty soon. Are you uh, anything else you want to say on this? Because that's pretty much all I had to say about yeah, UPS. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, we're gonna play around with this. We'll definitely, I'll definitely look into this and find out what I can do with this thing. But that was cool. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, we'll have some fun with this. We're gonna have to do a part two. We have. We, there's so of... much more stuff to talk about. What else are we gonna talk about? I forget. Uh, we have. Um, what have I been doing? I've been. I've been working on. All sorts of the DOT thing, courses and stuff like that. Trying to the DOT thing. What what else do you have to talk oh, about? Man. Uh, I forget. Oh, I I submitted a fifteen two two seven to put a pin number on my IRS account. On your social, or your IRS account. The the social, oh, oh, the IRS okay. yeah, social yeah. account. Yeah. Yeah, I. I sent it to Someone 15, did two, two, that, seven. and then they told me that, like, a, like within the week, they got a message from their bank telling them that they could no longer uh, do business with them. Essentially, that they had to close their account because it it couldn't be properly insured. Mm. And they asked me about it. I said, "Well, it sounds like they're drawing money out of your trust in order to pay for the insurance." Yeah, and that was that was the only thing I could think of. Because she was like, all I did, she's like, I didn't do anything with the bank. All I did was put that pin on my uh, social. And then that happened. So I said, oh, look at that. They've been drawn. I know a lot of guys who have done it. I don't think it's going to be a problem. No, I don't think it's a problem. Um, you can handle that stuff with the bank. And uh, I opened the Treasury Direct account, and I just have to send in. There's some documentation they require you to get notarized and send in. And it takes 13 weeks for them to process it. <laughs> So I'm going to be sending that in nice. pretty soon. And then I'm sending out the dictionary there we go. pretty soon. Just preparing all the documentation mm-hmm. for that. And uh, I heard that book that you recommended. Oh, yeah. Fruits from a Poisonous Tree. Yeah, I just ordered it on Amazon. So. Pretty excited about reading that. How the how the Federal Reserve uh, creates money out of thin air. Um, what is money versus Federal Reserve notes? It's impossible to pay the national debt. Yeah, but it says in there that if you um, use negotiable instruments, you're helping paying off the debt. So you have to use negotiable yeah. instruments to pay off the debt. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna like we really gotta do this documentary where we go and try to pay off the public debt with like. You know, random garbage on the side of the road turns negotiable insurance. <laughs> Bro, there's like, that's like my literal wet. We're going to do it. We're going to save yeah. the banks. They're going to be. S- We're going to bail all the banks out that's with right. beer, beer bottles. Beer bottles. Dr- well, beer drunk. bottles and like rotten furniture. <laughs> oh, dude. Here's- Cat piss couches, dude. Cat piss carpet. Cat oh. piss carpet and cat piss go. couches, dude. Oh, nice cat. <laughs> oh, that's a whole story. That's an inside joke. People don't get that one. Cat piss carpet. Cat piss, dude. <laughs> Fucking cat Oh, my pisses, God. Dude. That's great. All right. Well, it's been fun. D- I'm gonna read this shit. I'm excited yeah, about this. That 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 book is like mind blowing, man. Did you already read, I read this whole most thing? Most of it. I didn't finish it, but that that book is like, it is it is really good. He talks about negotiable instruments in there and how to actually get them approved, like how to get them to work. Hmm. It's in the chapter called Magicians. 
Jesus yeah, Christ. yeah. This guy, this guy is like, this guy really knew what he was talking about. He passed away, but non-resident there alien. <laughs> non-resident. It's freaking hilarious. Non-resident alien. All right, G. Well, uh, another great show. We'll have another one here soon. And uh, anything you want to say signing off here? Uh, everything I said today is for entertainment, especially entertainment. For all our, our entertainment, entertainment purposes. And educational purposes. Not for your entertainment. It's for our, our entertainment. entertainment oh, purposes. my goodness. Yeah, you guys are yeah. not. I thought that that's. You guys are not included. Your 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 misery is is my um, sitcom. Go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Signing off. Thanks again, right, Joe. We'll later. talk to you soon. All right.